All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship and none worthy of our ultimate love and devotion but Allah the Almighty alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not, except in a state of submission as Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person and from him he created his wife and from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kin. Surely Allah is ever an all watcher over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah. Fear him and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive you, will forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best words are those of Allah the Almighty. And the best guidance is that of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And the worst things in the religion are the newly invented matters. And all the newly invented matters in religion are an innovation and bid'ah. And every bid'ah is misguidance and it leads to the hellfire. Sometimes we call upon Allah. We ask, we ask him for things. And we wish upon things to happen. And we pray for them. But when they don't happen, we ask a question and we say, why doesn't Allah answer our dua? We look at the state of the Muslims. Sometimes Muslims are persecuted. Sometimes they're targeted. Sometimes they are killed and victimized. Sometimes they are chased, either legally chase to be hunted down and we wonder why does all of this happen to the Muslims if Allah is with them why does this happen to the Muslims we ask ourselves this question sometimes things unwanted things happen in our lives they're painful they're challenging they're hard the difficult to put up with and we say we ask ourselves a question why does this happen to me we all have these kind of questions we all experience that but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and we wonder what is the solution we wonder when we ask these questions when we face these predicaments what is the solution to this? And we even feel bad. Why do we have to question these things? 
But there is something in our minds that seeks answers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tas'alu an ashya'a in tubdalakum tasu'kum. O you who believe, don't ask about things. Don't question things. That if the answer to these questions is given to you, it would, it would put you in hardship. It will put you in an unideal position. The answer would not serve you. And what this verse suggests is that it seems for most of the time we're asking the wrong questions. And asking the right questions or recognizing first that we are asking the wrong questions, then finding out what the right questions are is one of the keys to a happy and successful life. In science, discoveries happen when scientists stop asking the wrong questions and change the questions, tweak them to ask the right ones, and then a discovery happens. It's not usually intelligence, it's just the perspective. Everyone knew gravity, everyone experienced gravity before Isaac Newton. Everyone noticed that things just fall down towards the earth. Everyone knew that. But no one ever managed to formulate it in a way, in a mathematical way, that, that had a limitless number of implications and applications, that it became so useful. When Newton asked the question differently, then he came up with something that was so practical. As parents, sometimes our child misbehaves. We ask the wrong questions. We say, why is my child doing this to me? Why is my child always getting into trouble? Doesn't my child understand my predicaments and my challenges? Why do I have to deal with this? Someone's spouse is giving them a hard time. Why do I have to deal with all of this? That's the question we ask. These questions make sure that we remain stuck in the mud because we're asking the wrong questions. But if we were to ask the right questions, the solutions are already available. They are readily available, but we just need to ask the right questions. So a big part of the art of living is to ask the right questions, especially with Allah. So let's say someone's child is misbehaving. When you ask the question, why do I have to deal with this all the time? If you change the question to, what is bothering my child? Because a child would not normally cry or get into trouble or make trouble unless they have something bothering them. They have a problem and they need help. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an outcry for help. But kids don't know how to put things in words so easily. Sometimes they don't understand that they are experiencing pain and discomfort. So the way their very immature self, still this young innocent self, shows itself or expresses itself is by getting into trouble, making trouble. So if I were to ask the question, is what is bothering my child that they are behaving in such a way? How can I help them? Now the whole situation changes. You start to identify with your child's pain. You start to feel empathy. And this will open a new path of thinking, a new perspective to the point that actually you'll start seeing what's bothering your child. You'll be able to help them and it will be better for your child and better for you. It's a win-win situation. When your spouse is giving you trouble, instead of asking, why do I have to put up with all of this? Ask the question, what is giving them so much pain that they have to get out of the, they have to, to behave in such a way that is not normal for them? See what's bothering them, identify with them. Then that changes your whole course of action towards a solution that works for everyone. And here we come to the heart of the matter, with Allah. You look at, as I said, the state of the Muslims. Why is this happening to the Muslims? If Islam is the truth, why there are so many people not believing in it? Why there are so many people challenge, challenging it? Why there are so many people who are picking up enmity against Islam and the Muslims? 
Or you look at Muslim countries, why are some Muslim governments behaving in such a way? And we are tempted to engage with that. But remember Allah's words, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tas'alu an ashya'a in tubtalakum tasurkum. Oh you who believe, don't ask questions. Don't ask about things that even the answers won't be helpful to you. It won't be helpful to you. You're, you're calling upon Allah to give you something. He's not been granting it to you. Don't say, why doesn't Allah give me what we want? Why doesn't Allah grant me what I'm asking for? That's not the right question. You know why? Because it's not about you. Because when you ask that question, you assume that life is about you. That you are at the center of existence. You want Allah to serve you. You were created to serve Allah and work for Him. Not the other way around. This life is not about you. You're a slave of Allah and He's the master. So when you ask, why doesn't Allah grant me what my wish? You are assuming that Allah works for you. Keep asking the wrong questions and your predicament will continue. But when you ask the right questions, then things will start changing. When things happen to you, you call upon Allah, you're not granted. Don't say, why doesn't Allah, why doesn't Allah grant me what, what, what I want? Maybe it's what I did yesterday. You're getting into Allah's business again. You're playing God. That's the human God. That's our nafs that assumes the position of divinity. We, we think we're God. We think Allah is supposed to serve us. We go the, the wrong way. This life is about you serving Allah. It's about you making the command of Allah become a reality. Acting upon the word of Allah. Making Allah's will a reality. That's what this life is about. So when you're asking the question, why doesn't Allah give me what I, what I want? You're assuming that Allah works for you and that you are the center of the world. Whereas Allah says, that I created you to worship me. Worship means you live for Allah. You love Allah. You live your life in love of Allah, in obedience to Allah, in fear of Allah. That Allah is what matters. Because this life is about celebrating the greatness of Allah, making it clear and manifest. And that's why Allah created you. Everything else in the universe, it just celebrates the names of Allah. Allah says, وَإِمِّنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُمْ There is nothing in existence except that it celebrates the name of Allah. It praises Allah. But you can't comprehend their praise. But you humans are the exception. You have to consciously do it. That's the choice that Allah gave us. That's the free will that Allah gave us. So you created to serve Allah. Allah is the center, not you. And life, your life is designed, even the minute details of your life. The color of your skin, the shape of your nose, your parents, your ancestry, your ethnicity, your background, your life circumstances, your spouse, your children, your siblings, even the food you eat, even the thoughts that go through your mind. All of that was custom designed for you prior to your creation. For what? For you to serve Allah. For Allah to be the center. You're just going through that script. You're just acting it out. You are translating it into a reality. And your choice lies, lies with the spirit to make Allah your center. So when you ask the question, why doesn't Allah answer my dua? You're assuming that you are the center and Allah rotates around you. You can call yourself a Muslim. You can probably memorize words from the Quran, a hadith from the Prophet. ﷺ. You can actually pray the five daily prayers, but if you don't fix this, there's a problem with your aqidah. There's a serious central issue with your faith, with your relationship with Allah. And you will keep asking the wrong questions and you'll keep bumping your head into the wall every time. 
your question is based on the wrong assumption. So Allah makes your, your life unfold in a way that maximizes your chances of worshiping Him, of being obedient to Him. When you think you are the center, you think life is supposed to serve you and Allah is supposed to serve you. But it's not designed that way. So you're going to have a problem with everything. You want a house, the house doesn't come to you. How come? Because you assume you're the center and Allah is supposed to serve you. Your wishes have to come true. When you don't get the car you want, then that, that puzzles you. When you get injured, you say, why is this happening? When the people around you don't behave in the way you want or according to your expectations, you say, what's wrong with the world? There's nothing wrong with the world. The world is functioning as it is supposed to. The problem is with how you're thinking about the world, how you're processing the world, what you assume about the world and its relationship to you. But if you shift the perspective and you see that everything in this world is designed to make the, world of, the word of Allah come true, that you worship Allah, that you devote yourself to Allah, that you serve Allah, that Allah is what matters. Allah is the center of existence and everything around rotates around that center to serve that center. Then anything that happens in the world will make so much sense. Everything will make so much sense. Why? Because even when things are challenging for you, you know it's not about you. It's about Allah. And unless you build your life around this, you're going to have so many issues with so many things, with so many people, even with yourself, and you will have a sense of loss and being lost all the time because nothing makes sense. Because you've, you've got the wrong perspective, perspective on everything. So ask the right questions. <clears throat> Next time, Allah doesn't answer your dua. You don't say, why doesn't Allah give me what I want? to Allah and say, Oh Allah, it's all about you. I trust that you will do the best to help me serve you and work for you. And you've got your problem completely vanishing. Because when it's not about you, whatever happens to you, you know it's designed according to the wisdom of Allah and the mercy of your Lord to help you worship Allah, to make things conducive for you to fulfill the mission of your creation. Hardship makes sense. Challenges make sense. Ease makes sense. Joy makes sense. Everything is right in place and at the right time. And then most of your problems are gone. Already gone. Because most of our problems come from us wishing that Allah behaves or Allah serves us, serves our wishing, serves our wishes. They come from us putting ourselves at the center of the universe and existence and expecting Allah to work for us. That's the human false God, the false human God. And that's where our problems and our pains come from. And when we fix that, we will reach the high state of a rida contentment. Contentment. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala. Said, Wallahi, Lakat Asbahtu Wamali Ridan illa fi mawadi al Qadr. He says, I reached a state in my life that when I wake up in the morning, I look forward and I already have the contentment and acceptance of what's going to happen. He says, My contentment waits to what's going to happen and it attaches to it. Meaning, I let Allah do His work. I know he's going to do the best. And I just focus on my work. And I'm happy with how Allah does his work. So we should stop asking the wrong questions. Ask the right questions. And the right question when things don't happen the way you want is that you should say, Oh Allah, how can I be a better servant for you? How can I fulfill your commands upon me even better?
must have if you hit an A. What then? When we ask the wrong questions, we put ourselves in trouble. And the problem with that is that it becomes a downward spiral. It's a vicious cycle in the sense when we put ourselves in the center and we think Allah should give us what we want and we think we are entitled and, and that's the wrong perspective and when things don't happen according to our wishes and according to our expectations we start developing bad thoughts about Allah and that's why you hear sometimes people asking if Allah is merciful why do innocent people suffer and die? It looks like an innocent question, but behind that question is a is a is a human false god. It's a human false god. Someone who thinks Allah is your servant. Allah is the servant of humanity. There is no violation bigger than that towards Allah. Remove the veil that blinds us from the magnificence of Allah and the greatness and the glory of Allah. And let's put ourselves in the right place. And we should be aware of how our times and the culture of our times shape us. We live in a world of desire and aggrandizement. Life is all about desires. In these days, it's all about giving you what you want. All what you want. Everything you think about, making things easy for you. Convenience, comfort, luxuries. Life is all about this. To the point now that you can just, with, with pressing a button, you can actually buy what you want and it arrives right to your doorstep. So we have become so entitled. We think Allah should work for us. Allah should deal with us like Amazon deals with us. We think Allah, some, some of us treat Allah as a vending machine. You sort of put a token or a coin and you get what you want. Oh Allah, I made dua, give me what I want. See, you think you are the master. That's the problem. So we have to put everything around the correct foundation. The reason you are here is to worship Allah, to celebrate the name of Allah, to make the word of Allah come into a reality or become a reality. That's it. Everything in this life is designed to help you fulfill that if you are willing to commit and act upon that. Any other perspective you develop, any other wish that you have, any other viewpoint about the world that you have is your problem. And when it gives you pain and it makes you suffer, Blame only yourself. Even if you inherited that from your parents, or from the media, or from online, or from influencers, and from celebrities, even if you inherited that from, from your imam, or your sheikh, or your teacher, or whatever. At the end of the day, if you are approaching the world wrong, with the wrong expectations and the wrong understanding, you are going to suffer, and that will push you further from Allah. And do you know what? We have a lot of industry now that is travel that, that has covered the world and has long infiltrated the Muslim community about self-help and about self-development. There's nothing wrong with the concept because we are supposed to improve ourselves as Muslims and always become better people so we can fulfill the mission of Allah better. And we can up our game with serving Allah and acting upon His commands. But uh, we have adopted a lot of non-Muslim concepts that actually violate our aqidah and eat at the core of our relationship with Allah. We have beautiful concepts like you are the slave, Allah is the master and you serve him. And for many people, if you're acting from the wrong perspective, that sounds like a strange way of life. I don't want to, I don't want to, that's like it's not about me like I'm no longer the center I'm no longer the center of attention many people are scared even to entertain the thought 
She's like, I'm nothing. Because in reality, you are nothing. Without Allah, you are nothing. So make sure you're nothing. You live a delusion. You only become something when you fulfill the mission for, for which you were designed. It's very hard to swallow. But that's what we are supposed to do. There's a lot of concept now in circulation. Oh, self-love. Self -love. You deserve the best. You deserve the best. You can do it. You are able to do it. Right? The giant within. The genius inside of you. You can do whatever you, pl you put your mind on. These are non-Islamic concepts. Because all of those turn you into a false god. And you start worshipping yourself and expecting Allah to serve you. But for us, we know Allah takes good care of us. No question about that. No doubt about that. As Allah promised, Who's more truthful than Allah in his speech? Allah does not break his promise. That's, that's a given. There's no question about this. But the question is, are we committed to Allah? Are we obedient to Allah? Are we true servants? Are we slaves of Allah? So much shame is attached to that. Why? Because of the wrong practices of some nations in the past that abused slaves and, and, and kidnapped innocent, free human beings and gave humanity a very vicious and heinous and atrocious example of how to treat one another just because they belong to a different ethnicity or a different color. So we, we shy away from the word we are slaves of Allah because of that shame. We're not responsible for the crimes and mistakes of other people. We are slaves of Allah because that's the ultimate honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he prayed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, elevated his status, he said, Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Glory be to Allah. Who took his slave, abdi, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his slave from al-Ka'ba to al-masjid al-aqsa and then to the heavens. That's the highest honor that a person can reach. But again, it's the human false god mentality that we're living today. And we have adopted that from non-Muslim ideologies and ideas. We have adopted that and we try to Islamize them, normalize them within the Muslims. And what that does, it, it makes us take foreign alien, counter or counterproductive ideas that are counter to Islam. And then try to give them an Islamic facade. And what that does, it makes, turns us into hypocrites. You don't want to do that. So remember, it's not about you. This life is not about you. It's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are here to serve Allah. You are a servant of Allah and you are supposed to live your life like that. And that the, that's the only time you can get value. Without that, there is no value for you. You will just live as a false god. And you can live that delusion, but when the moment of death comes, you will wake up to the reality that your life was nothing. You turned your potential into nothing. Into mere imagination. And the consequences will be eternal and severe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts and our eyes to the truth and help us be true slaves of Him, to serve Him and make His will become a reality and live our lives making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the center of our life and the center of our efforts. Allahumma khfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Allahumma khfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa nsurna ala al qawm al kafirin. Allahumma khfir lana wa li walidina wa li man lahum haqqun alayna bi rahmatika ya rahim al rahimin. Allahumma anir basairana. Allahumma anir basairana. Wahdina subulana ya dal jalali wal ikram. اللهم كن للمستضعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان اللهم ارحم ضعفهم اللهم اجبر كسرهم اللهم انصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ألهمنا رشدنا 
واجعلنا ضائعين لك في أحوالنا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Just a reminder as we are leaving after Salah please just listen to the instructions because because we're going to get each line to leave in turn so please follow the instructions to